What's up, everybody? Welcome to another week of Northeast Students Live. Uh, we're glad you guys are here. This is actually our last week of this, which is crazy. It's also crazy to me that we've been doing this since spring break. Uh, feels like that's been forever. So, uh, man, we're really excited about tonight. Uh, we're excited about capping off this series that we've been in, capping off a series of Northeast Students Live from our house. Uh, if you know somebody who's not on right now, text them and tell them to jump on because tonight's going to be really fun uh, as we kind of finish out that series and have a conversation about all of the weeks that we've talked about in dating and then Michaela and I getting to answer some questions and stuff like that. So also be thinking of some questions that you want to ask about dating. Uh, we're going to save the end of the night for that. So make sure that you're thinking on what you want to ask uh, so that we can answer that live because that would be really fun. So. Uh, just a couple of announcements as we get going. First of all, we had our middle school Zoom hangout last night. Shout out to those of you who were on that hangout with us playing a fun game. Uh, and congrats to Izzy, who won a free gift card uh, as a part of the game. So she picked Chick-fil-A. She probably should have picked Whataburger because it's better. Michaela says no. Uh, Chick-fil-A, it is though. So Izzy will be sending you a gift card. Congrats. Thanks for playing. It was good. Counting the cost is the reading plan that we're currently in. Uh, we're about a week and a half into this one, and we're going to be in this reading plan until June 7th, which is next Sunday. So if you haven't jumped in already, go ahead and jump in. We would love for you guys to be a part of that. Uh, and if you haven't been participating in the comments part of that, be sure to do that. Love hearing what you guys are getting out of Scripture. And so uh, engage in that. And know this too, that's something we're going to continue throughout the summer. Uh, and so we've got plans. I've got a meeting tomorrow with our team to kind of talk through what that looks like and we'll be getting that information to you. Uh, but man, lean in. We love interacting with you guys that way. Kristen covered our Sunday So What for us this week. Make sure you go check that out if you haven't already. If you're meeting with your small groups tonight, um, hopefully you guys are discussing that. Uh, but we wrapped up our Counterfeit God series on Sunday mornings and just talked through, man, what does it look like to value the opinion of others above the opinion of God? Um, something that's really, really easy for us to get stuck in and really easy for us to make that an idol in our lives. Um, so Kristen did a great job of breaking that down, so go check that out uh, so you don't miss it. We have a new series kicking off uh, next Sunday uh, called Love Thy Neighborhood. Uh, it's got kind of a Mr. Rogers vibe, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so make sure you guys jump in on Sunday morning as we kick off that series as well. This last week we had another stay home challenge. Uh, we asked you to recreate a family photo uh, all together and the winning families would get dinner on us. So we've selected two winners this week because uh, I thought these were so good. So the first one here is from the Stark family. Uh, so they recreated this picture so well. Check this out. Even the little berets and the hair, so good. Uh, it's funny to see the wider shot though because you see how long they are now compared to that old picture. Uh, so Stark family, great job recreating this picture. Uh, we're going to give you pizza uh, and so make sure that you are watching your phone. Uh, Amanda's going to be texting you guys about what you guys want and when you want it and we'll be sending it to your house. We have a second winner though and that is the Kellogg family. Uh, this swing recreation photo is so great. So you can see here uh, this picture of old. And then check this out, like they even got like the right levels on the swing uh, and timed that just right. Well done, like the attention to detail, uh, we got rain boots on in both pictures, just so well done. So Kellogg's, we're gonna get you guys some pizza too. Uh, Kristen will be texting you guys to see when you guys want that and what you want. Uh, by the way, here's a question for the chat since we're talking about pizza. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, there's a correct answer and there's an incorrect answer, just so you know. Uh, and if you're saying in the chat that you cannot put pineapple on pizza, then you're wrong because you can and it's delicious. Uh, so make sure, yeah, you guys are watching your phone uh, so we can buy you some pizza. Pineapple on pizza is the way to go. I recommend it. Uh, just a couple of other updates. Uh, first of all, like we said, this is our last night of Northeast Student Ministry Live. It's our last night of what would have been Enrich, our small groups. Um, and so we are going to be giving our small group leaders a break for the summer like we usually do. Uh, just give them a chance to kind of refresh and have some extra time with their family and go on vacation and things like that. Uh, and so, man, make sure you reach out to your small group leaders and say thank you for everything that they've done for you this year. Obviously, you can still stay in touch with them over the summer and you may see them around at some stuff that we're doing. Uh, but we just want to say a huge thank you to all of our small group leaders, all of our student ministry volunteers. Man, we love you guys, and we are so, so, so grateful for you. Uh, so students, make sure you guys say thank you to them. Reach out with a text or drop it in the chat. 
um, to say thank you to your small group leader. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, last thing, uh, man, I know it's I know it's a thing that is hard. We talked this week about having to cancel camp this summer, and then Generate even had to cancel camp. Um, and so I don't know about you guys, but that was rough for me. That was hard. I was super bummed about that. Uh, but I don't know if you saw the video we posted on Instagram after that, but know this, like God is still going to work this summer. There are still plans uh, for us to connect with God and to connect with each other. And so we have a team meeting tomorrow, our student ministry team, and we're going to talk through, man, what does that look like? What are some things that we could do this summer to engage with you guys that would be new and exciting? Uh, and our plan is to not miss a beat. Just because we're not in Colorado doesn't mean that it's going to be anything less. And so we want uh, to be a part of that with you guys this summer. So be looking forward to that. We've also got a pretty big announcement about our summer tomorrow. So be sure to watch our social media uh, and we'll be posting something on there. We'll probably drop a video on YouTube later too. Uh, so make sure you're watching that so you can catch that important announcement tomorrow. Now, uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, oh yeah, it's my wife, Michaela. It's time for Michaela's Mom Jokes of the Week. Everybody give it up at home. Congratulations. Uh, Michaela, you've made it all the way through. We didn't boot you out. Um, Yet. I could still kick you off tonight, I guess, if the jokes are just that bad. You could. But they've been pretty bad. So. But if you do that, then you have <laughs> nothing to talk about tonight. So you have to keep me. Drew said he has a question about predestination. No, I <laughs> ran it over there and it said, Jake. Drew has a question for JP about <laughs> predestination. I was gonna oh, tell you man. about it, so I got you, Drew. I got you. Okay. <laughs> to my jokes. What you got? I decided to stick with the music world for these. The music world, okay. Yeah, yeah. I like music. Okay. First one. What happened to Fifty Cent when he got hungry? Oh, Fifty Cent, old school. Uh, what happened to Fifty Cent when he got hungry? I don't know. Fifty eight. <laughs> oh my that's like the seven, eight, nine joke. Yeah, but yeah. Five, 50 eight, cent. like. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 58. Get out of here. Okay. That's pretty bad. We might They're have good. to later tonight. No, no. <laughs> okay, the second one. Why did Adele cross the road? Uh, I don't know. Why did Adele cross the road? To sing Hello from the Other Side. <laughs> Hello from the Other Side. Okay. That's... I'd sing it for you, but then I'd really get the No, you should. It, so. you no. should. Everybody wants it. That's what they're saying in the chat right no, now. No, it's not happening. <laughs> Here's another question for the chat. Uh, do you prefer Adele's Hello? Oh, please. Or Lionel Richie? Hello. See, I say night too. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. I'm not, even oh, though there are not people physically in front of me, I'm not singing for you. You guys give it up for Michaela. Uh, she has done a great job with Michaela's Mom Jokes of the Week. That's been a fun part of our segment every week. So Michaela, thanks for prepping Mom Jokes every week. You're welcome. All right, we've got a lot to cover tonight. We wanna to jump right into this conversation on dating as we wrap this up. And so we're actually gonna jump straight to that. Michaela, I'm gonna ask you if you can pray for us and then we're gonna jump in. All right. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for everything you've given us. I thank you for this time that we are able to come and still have church, even though we're not able to meet with each other. I pray that tonight would be helpful for um, some students just to understand about dating and that our story would help them and um, that there would be good questions tonight. And we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Michaela's especially pumped tonight uh, for two reasons. One, because I'm making her talk more than usual and she loves to talk and be public <laughs> and stuff like that. So we're gonna talk about our story a little bit at the end of the night, which will be fun. Uh, but she's also pumped genuinely because it's the last week she has to see this graphic, which I don't know, we might just have to bring it back for something else. It's so good. No, no. <laughs> or or I'm just gonna go buy a pink shirt and a suit and Yeah, I'm not gonna wear that, no. <laughs> that's, that's not gonna oh, happen. Man. So in this series called Summer Lovin', uh, we've been talking about three questions when it comes to dating. Uh, when to date, so when are you ready to date, uh, why to date, and who to date. And so tonight we're talking about the who to date question, but we wanna back up and just recap the first two weeks because uh, we feel like it's been some really good conversations. So first of all, we had Brian here week one talking about when to date. And his answer was, you are ready to date when you love God most, when you seek Him first, and when you have accountability. And a couple things in that, like we talked about accountability, that 
is really actually going to hold you accountable. You can find the answers that you want uh, if you ask the right questions and if you ask different people. But man, we're talking about accountability that's going to hold you to loving God most and seeking him first. And so if you're not in that place where you're doing those three things right now, then you're not ready to date yet. Uh, Secondly, we talked about um, why to date. And last week we talked about don't date to fill a selfish need. One of the things we talked about in that is there is no casual dating. There is no dating just for fun or just while I'm in high school or just so I can have somebody to go to prom with. All of those reasons are super selfish, and that's not what God has designed dating for. And one thing we talked about actually was if you're dating somebody casually, if you're doing that for selfish reasons, then you need to go back to week one because you're probably not loving God most or seeking Him first. And you probably don't have somebody accountable uh, that's, that's asking you like, man, why are you in this? What's your motivation? Where's your heart at? And so make sure that you're uh, loving God most, seeking Him first, uh, having accountability, and then don't dealt don't date just to fill this selfish need. Um, date with the intention of marriage in mind is what we talked about because that's God's designs for that. So this week we're on to who should you date. Uh, and so I don't know if some of you guys are watching tonight because you are ready for the answer. You want us to give us give you the specific person. Uh, I've got a list of names here on this computer. I'm just kidding. Uh, but we, man, want to give you some tips. And what does it look like to pursue that? Because we don't have the automatic answers. It's just like... Uh, where am I going to go to college or where am I going to live in 10 years? Like there are no hard answers for that, but there is hard truth that God gives us in his word and things that we can do to pursue him in that. So the first thing we want to talk about is this, and we want you guys to respond to this in the chat. We would love to hear uh, what are the things on your list? What's on your list when it comes to somebody who you want to date? And it's completely okay. We're giving you permission to be superficial right now and cheesy and honest, just all the things uh, that you think you are looking for in somebody to date. Uh, I want to see those in the chat, but first of all, I'm going to ask you, Michaela, since you're here and we're waiting for people to respond, what are the things that were on your list before you met the person who met everything you needed uh, and married him? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Even Uh, things things that may have been on your list that maybe I didn't necessarily meet. um, I don't know why this is a thing, but like not picking out something at, like a bad quality of somebody and then like breaking up with them because of it if that makes sense not entirely but okay okay <laughs> like you have some something about you that i don't like so then yeah so you just break up with yeah them because mm-hmm. of that. okay so not having one of those okay um <laughs> somebody that um likes to hang out with their family Okay. That's a big thing for Family me. Family guy, that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> um, somebody who will take me out, like, on dates. And, okay, yep. And pay for me. There you go. <laughs> pay. <laughs> uh, we'll get to that part of the story later. Yes. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I think for me, uh, it's funny when I look back and think about when I was in middle school or early high school, um, most guys have a pretty short list. Like I think the the thing on the list is hot, right? Like we just want somebody hot that wants to be in a relationship with us. Uh, and like maybe on that list is just having anybody who will date me even at some point. Right. Um, so there's some answers coming in. Somebody who's funny. Uh, somebody who's six six said Amanda. <laughs> That's really specific, Amanda. I, I think Michael Jordan's unavailable. Uh, Aubrey said somebody who's funny. Uh, Kale said a Spurs fan. Great answer, Kale. Because if you start dating a girl and she's like, "Man, I'm really into the Los Angeles Lakers or the Clippers or something like that," why would they be? Into come the on, Clippers? that they don't love Jesus. What? <laughs> why would yeah, they who, be into? The who would be into the Clippers? That's a great question. Uh, Abby said funny, nice. Uh, friends first. Mason said, must be a Christian, must be kind, must be loyal. Uh, Sarah said, funny, caring, sweet, able to admit mistakes. That's a good one. Um, yeah, one of the things for me was just common interests too. So as uh, somebody who would want to do the same things that I would want to do so that we can enjoy those together. Um, this is a little bit of a, well, this is definitely a superficial one. It's not a little bit. I didn't want to date somebody who was taller than me which is difficult because I'm not tall. <laughs> I'm pretty short. And I come from parents who are short. 
But I, I think it's weird to So look up. when I wear my wedges, yeah, it's exactly. upset. Exactly. It's just, it's different. You're not at the right height. The I'm right sorry, height I'm level. average. Throws me off, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm average. So here's the deal about these lists, right? Like we come up with these things and we, we have these wants and these like checklists and you see somebody you think is cute and you're like, well, checks that box, checks that box, checks that box or whatever. And you're going down the line. Here's the truth of that though. Your list is worthless. <laughs> uh, let's just pop that bubble right now and be done with it. Those lists that we come up with are worthless. Um, what you see on movies and TV and Instagram like and in songs, those things just aren't real. And those things a lot of times drive what we're looking for in a relationship. It's just unrealistic. Those aren't the things that we're going to get to experience. Secondly, it's selfish, right? Like, why, why are we going to just make this list to create the perfect person for us. Like again, going back to the why of dating, like if, if that's to fill something just I want, if I'm looking for something that I need and so I'm creating this really specific list to get everything that I want, then man, that's about me. That's selfish. And then lastly, like it just doesn't work. That's just not how it turns out, right? There are things that I thought at one point that I wanted. There are things that Michaela thought at one point she wanted that neither of us have. Um, and the deal is it's not settling. It's not saying, well, I'm never going to find the perfect person. So I guess I'll just deal with you, right? Like it's not that at all. Actually, what it is, is just trusting God with all of the details of that. And so there are things about Michaela that weren't on my list that are pleasant surprises. Like I am so excited to be married to somebody who's super compassionate and who's a great mom and loves our kids really well and doesn't get as stressed out as I do when Kinsler won't stop throwing a fit like and I just want to punt him uh, and Michaela's good at like calming things down like that wasn't originally on my list because my list was superficial as a middle school boy or whatever um, those lists don't work it's worthless it's not settling when you when you get rid of that list it's just trusting that God has something better in store it's a little bit like looking for a house. We closed on our new house this week and we're really excited to move here in about a month. Uh, but when you're looking for a house, like there's this checklist of things that Michaela and I have, we want this and this and this and this and this. Like nine times out of 10, people don't find the perfect house. There are things about this house that we're getting that don't have like a bigger backyard would have been cool, like more space there. But there are things in the house that we didn't have on our list that are better, right? And so we, we make these lists that are worthless because the end result, like God has something better in store for us. God has something better that we can't see. And so here's what we're going to talk about tonight. We already said, right, in week one, love God most, seek him first. Um, but when we're talking about who to date, we have to fix our mentality to this. We won't get dating right until we view it as companionship over consumerism. We won't get dating right until we view it as companionship over consumerism. Consumerism is this idea that we are looking for something that's for us. It's this idea of a list, this idea of here are all the things that I want that would make a relationship perfect. This is what I define a perfect mate as um, because that's what I want. That's what I think is best. That's what I feel I need, right? And so that's consumerism. And we're like so wrapped up in this idea that everything around us is for us and it's what we need and if if somebody's not doing what we want or what we need then uh like they just need to get out of our way and that's wrong that's not how we're designed we're designed to live in relationship with each other and so when we say that dating is about companionship we mean this companionship is about someone going in the same direction as you and so when I think about Michaela and I and our marriage, like this is a partnership. This is something that we do together. It's not something where I married Michaela so that I could get what I want, right? That's not the why of dating. I dated Michaela with an intent to get married so that we could have this companionship, this partnership. When you talk about a companion, like the definition of it is, man, you're spending life together um, so that you can complement or match each other, right? And so there's like the thing opposites attract. And in some ways, Michaela and I are super opposite. Uh, we talk about like Enneagram stuff, right? Like I'm a one and Michaela's a nine. Like I'm an organized planner guy. Michaela's a little more f flexible and chaos and her desk is not they quite as organized as well. You know? Yeah, just go with the flow, right? And so like 
if, if we are trying to live in companionship, those things can complement each other. And there are times where Michaela has things that she's way better at. There are things that I'm better at. And so together in companionship uh, and partnership in marriage, then that relationship works. If, if our relationship was all about what I wanted or all about what Michaela wanted, then we wouldn't both be happy. And we wouldn't both be moving towards Christ in the right way. So uh, we have to get this straight. So we're going to check out Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 um, to talk about this. So Michaela, when you get there, will you read that for us? Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated in the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Yeah, so again, this is probably a verse that you've heard, right? And, and you may be, as Michaela started reading that, like, oh yeah, I've heard that verse before, run the race and all this stuff. Like, and so, so what does this have to do with dating, right? So we're going to dive back into that. And so the point of tying this verse to this conversation is this. Jesus has to be first. The, there is only one thing on the list that really, really matters in this conversation, and it's a pursuit of Jesus Christ. That has to be the priority in any relationship. Uh, Brian and I talked about when he was here, uh, we have common interests, and there are things that we like to do together, like disc golf, which is amazing and so much fun. Uh, and that's great. That's something that ties us together, but it's not the thing that's foundational for that friendship. The thing that's foundational in that friendship is we are both pursuing Jesus and we want to chase him with everything we've got. If you read through this verse too, it's actually kind of brutal. Like it's pretty intense to think through the description of that. So Michaela, I'm going to have you actually read that again and listen in this to what are we called to do? Not just in a dating relationship, but as Christians, as Christ followers, or even just as humans who have been designed by God to worship him, what is he calling us to? Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy before for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Yeah, so in this, there's a couple things that I want to touch on, right? We said the goal is to chase Jesus. Paul's using this illustration of a runner. We're running towards Jesus, the, the race that God has set before us, the plan, the calling that is set before us. Uh, the Bible says multiple times, in Isaiah 43 specifically, uh, God says that we have been designed with the purpose of bringing him glory, of bringing him honor, right? We talked about last week and the week before, actually, about uh, Jesus saying the most important thing is to love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the most important thing. At the beginning of this verse, it says, lay aside every weight as you're in that, right? If I'm trying to run a race and I'm just carrying a, you know, this backpack full of bricks, like I'm not going to succeed in that. And if I'm trying to drag along, you know, uh, something over here and something in this hand, and I'm trying to carry something. Uh, I'm the guy like, I think this is a dad move. But when I go to the grocery store, like I want to get it all in in one trip. I feel like a failure if I don't carry all of it in. Uh, and a couple weeks ago, I was doing that and dropped the bag with the eggs in it, right? And it fell. Like, so there's this hindrance. I was just bared down by all of this stuff. And so this, the first part of this verse says, man, get rid of all of that in pursuit of Christ. Lay down every weight. And here's the thing. That includes relationships, right? That includes this relationship even. My priority has to be Christ. Um, when you think about the story of Abraham and Isaac, like it is so crazy that God called Abraham to sacrifice his own son. But what's even crazier is Abraham was going to do it. Like I've told some people this before, like I, I can't imagine holding a knife up and getting ready to plunge that into Kinsler's chest or Colby's chest. But my priority has to be Christ far above anything else. 
And so when we're talking about a dating relationship, the first thing in this verse is, man, lay all that down in pursuit of Christ. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying it's wrong to date or wrong to get married, but your priority has to far outweigh that. Your priority to chase Christ has to be way out in front of anything else, including good relationships like the relationship I have with Michaela. Secondly, after that, it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He endured the shame. He took on the hate of sinners. Like, that's incredible, y'all. What, what it's saying is Jesus loved you so much, and he saw it as joy. He knew that there was going to be a good result to the most painful torture you can imagine. So Jesus came to earth, gave up his place on the throne in heaven to live a life with us, die the worst death possible so that he could have a relationship with you. And so for me, if I even start to comprehend that, what that means is I have to give everything up, up for that because nobody else has done that for me and nobody else has loved me that way. And so my priority is going to be Christ. And so I'm going to chase after him with everything I've got, right? And so back to dating, right? So, so what does that mean? What it means is you need to start a relationship with someone who's going in the same direction as you. Like we said, dating is not bad. Marriage is not bad. God has actually established marriage. He's the one who came up with the idea of a family, right? Coming together. And that's the, the first place that discipleship happens. And so this is God's plan. This is God's design. But we have to do it in pursuit of him. Last week we talked about if you don't have an in direction, if you haven't talked to your partner about where you're going, then you're going to get off track and you're going to end up somewhere you don't want to be. So right at the beginning, you have to both decide that we are going to chase Jesus together. That's going to be our priority. And so God knows who that person is going to be for you, right? God knows that he's got a plan. He knows who that person is that you're going to meet at some point. Uh, and he knows what your life's going to look like 30 years from now. He knows all of that. But what God cares about most is your pursuit of him. Um, here's another truth about dating. You're not going to find the one, right? Everybody talks about this idea that like, there's the one person out there that I'm destined to be with and I got to find them and marry them and movies and TV will tell you that or whatever. Like this is not something that I see in scripture. Uh, Matt Chandler has this thing. He says, if, if there really is the one for each of us, then nobody's going to actually find that person because one person messing that up messes it up for everybody. Right? If somebody else would have thought Michaela was the one, and she was actually the one I was supposed to be with, then they're married, and then I marry somebody else's one, like it doesn't work. And so our focus should not be on finding this one person that's perfect, that meets these things on our checklist. Our goal is to pursue God first, and then trust Him with finding a partner that gets to do that with us and pushes us to be better in that pursuit. We honor God when we're in a relationship with somebody who's going to make us better. I've heard a lot of people say this, uh, especially at Northeast. Some of our youth workers have said this. Run towards Jesus and then look around you. Those are the people that should be in your inner circle of friends. Those are the people in the group where you should be looking for your spouse. If you're not pursuing God first, if you're pursuing relationships first, you're going to be looking at the wrong pool of people. You're going to be looking at the people that aren't going to be God honoring in the end because they're not pursuing Christ first. My attention needs to be focused on Jesus and how I can grow closer to him. And like for Michaela and I, she was pursuing him as well. And I recognize that. And so that made this partnership work. That made this companionship work because we're both pursuing the same thing. For a relationship to work, you have to pursue God first. And so the who, the who to date is somebody who's pursuing God that's going to make you better in that pursuit. Not somebody who's going to make me, you know, better because of the things that I want. Not somebody who is going to make my life more enjoyable because she likes to watch sports. But somebody who makes my life better because she's pushing me towards Christ. And that's what Michaela is for me. That's why we're together. And if at any point one of us stops pursuing Jesus, this isn't going to work. Jesus is love. Jesus defines love. Jesus shows us what that is and makes that possible. And so if we try to do this without him, we fail. We miss out on that. So 
Pursue God first, run towards him, and then look around you for the people who are chasing him too. And maybe in that pool, you'll find somebody who's attractive that God's directing you to uh, that will help you grow closer to him. So with that, we just wanted to tell our story a little bit. Um, And some of this is just for fun, just so you guys get to know us better. But also, we just want to talk about some of the things in that path that were either mistakes or things that uh, we wish we could do over that kind of thing. So, Michaela, if you would tell our story a little bit, how we got to dating and to where we are now. Yeah, so it was really funny um, just talking about this and seeing what seems important in my view of it and then Jonathan. So it's funny just (laughs) reminiscing about it. Um, so, fun fact, if you don't know this already, we have known each other since both of us were in the second grade. We went to the same private school. Um, That's 11 you, years, by the way. We met 11 years ago. Or no, we started dating 11 years ago. Sorry. Yes. We've we're known each other for that. over yeah. 20 years. <laughs> yeah, 20 years. Sorry. That's yeah. right. Um, and then uh, we did sports together, so we were always kind of in the same area, especially basketball. We both did basketball. Um, and then... From middle, we did that middle school, high school, and then we were dating other people. And um, when we became interested in each other, it just wasn't the right time. And so it came to our senior year, and it was about October ish, and we started talking. And well, back up. Yeah, we started talking. And so before I wanted it to be anything, I told him, I was like, well, I just kind of have a relationship like in the summer, so I don't really want to start dating yet. And he was totally cool with that. So we're just talking and getting to know each other more than just an athlete and a classmate. (laughs) And um, so it came around to our Christmas banquet. I think that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. And, um, after that, I told him, okay, I think I'm ready to start dating again. So that's when we started dating. And um, we were dating for four years before we got married. And we ended up going to the same college, not because we were dating each other, but because that's what both of our career paths were. So that was um, neat. And then we got married. and. We're going on year seven, so and two kids later. Seven years this summer, yeah, and that's what I was saying earlier. Eleven years together overall, which seems crazy. And you guys, your parents may way out faces like my parents have been married for over thirty years, which is crazy. Um, but in that, we just want to share a little bit of our experience and answer some questions um, to what's been hard, what's been easy, you know, that kind of thing. So I've got a couple questions that we'll answer for you. But go ahead and start dropping some questions in the chat. If you have questions about uh, Mikhail and I, our dating relationship, or just a specific question about dating, something that we've covered in these last three weeks, go ahead and start dropping those in the chat. And then we'll work through some questions and then be able to answer some of those as well. So uh, Mikhail, here's my first question. What were some of your dating mistakes? Uh, Like whether it was our relationship or before that? So I would say like in middle school, I dated people, but, like, we dated and said we were dating, but we never went anywhere or did anything. So I would say that was, like, a big mistake. It would be, like, that, dating just because, uh, to have the title. Um, And then the second one, I would say the previous relationship that I was in before um, I started dating Jonathan was I didn't realize that it wasn't healthy and that I wasn't being treated correctly like the way I should be treated and um so that was a big one like I wish I would have recognized that in the moment instead of like looking back and being like oh that's not normal yeah I would agree with some of that like I I dated some people in middle school and it was just to have a girlfriend and I would say even some of my relationships in high school was uh more about what I wanted and just to have a girlfriend to have fun to you know go to the movies together to you know have somebody to hold a hand with or make out or whatever like horrible reasons to be in a relationship uh yeah just wasn't really pursuing god's purpose for that um and so yeah just was missing out on his design and a lot of those relationships ended badly because we were going different directions we weren't both pursuing god together so um 
Michaela, how did you know that we should get married? Like, was there a moment for you uh, or like, what did God use to tell you that, yeah, like this is my plan, y'all should be together? Um, I would say like, just with our big thing is, we're both family people. And so like the fact that our families get along so well, like that's one of our like, favorite things I would say about us being married overall is like our parents get along really well together and like we went to New York City during Thanksgiving and our parents without us okay. were gonna have Thanksgiving without us. <laughs> so just the fact that they get to they enjoy that and then um yeah. Yeah. I would say a couple things for me. Um first of all, uh there were several moments in our dating relationship where Michaela even led me in, in like pointing me back towards God and, uh, you know, uh, if it was a decision that I was struggling with or whatever, she was quick to point me towards what would God want or, um, you know, that's not right. Like, this is what God wants for you. Um, and so that was huge for me. But also, um, even in just deciding where to go to school, um, you guys may have heard me tell this story before, but I was all set to head off to Kentucky uh, and go to the University of Kentucky, go Big Blue, uh, and cheer on the Wildcats, but um, God was directing me somewhere else. But in that conversation, Michaela said, like, I don't want to stop you from doing what God wants you to do and pursuing what you need to do, like, do that first. And so just like we talked about tonight, um, Michaela wanted my priority to be what God had planned for me, not this relationship. Um, so that was super cool as well. So. Um, yeah, keep dropping some questions in the chat. We've got some coming in. Um, we'll ask this. Uh, what are the good things about our relationship now? What are the things that are hard about our relationship now? Um, yeah, seven years into marriage and more than that together. Um, I would say, th like, one good thing is, like, we still date each other, even though we're married. Like, we're still going on dates, um, which has been hard during quarantine, but... Um, and then, um, just, you are really good at encouraging me if I'm struggling with something and, like, building me up, and if I'm not confident in it, you are helpful with that, so that's good. And then just, um, another thing, adding in, just, like, being a good dad to the boys and playing with them, so. That's good. Um, I would say one of the things that I would... Uh, that I really appreciate about our relationship now is that parenting partnership. Like, um, I feel like we do that really well together. Um, it is a companionship and it's something that takes more than one person. Yeah. Uh, when Michaela's gone and I've got both the kids, like, man, that's work and it's, it can be frustrating. And so we're really good about helping each other uh, with that. Um, yeah. And so what are, what are hard things about our relationship? Uh, like what's, what's difficult about that? Um, I would say, like, I get stuck in something and you, well, let me work that backwards. So, when we have a discussion, <laughs> discussions, or something bothers the other one, Jonathan is quick to, like, fix it. And so he wants to talk about it. And there are a lot of times that I don't want to talk about it. But he will not leave me alone until I talk about it. So that's, that's, that's mine. Yeah, I would agree. Like, that's the classic guy thing to do is try to fix it or whatever. It's just how I'm built and how you're built. Uh, yeah, and so that can lead to hard discussions. And I'm, I'm trying to be helpful by fixing it when you want me to be helpful by just giving you space or hear you. Um, and so... Man, it's work for us to both try to recognize where the other one's at and, and try to adjust what we're doing or how we're thinking to that. So a couple of questions that came in. Uh, the Kane Brothers asked, was it uncomfortable when you started to date people? Oh, yeah. Like, dating is so awkward. Um, there are just so many things about dating that are uncomfortable, especially yeah. when it's new. Um, yeah, I've got some horror stories. I remember uh, a date that I was on, and I puked in front of her and her family not good uh, that was super uncomfortable and awkward it was uh, me. dating in general is just uncomfortable i would say uh, this is a good question did your parents have rules about when or who you dated mine didn't they just didn't care no <laughs> no yeah part of the thing that was cool like michaela said is 
because we knew each other for so long, I knew her parents going into it. And so like we already had sort of a relationship, which was good. Um, my parents, as far as rules, like, uh, yeah, somebody who was chasing after Christ and uh, our thing was always just be open and honest about what's going on. And so there was never a relationship or anything that was hidden. Like we talked about that and what's going on. And uh, I remember talking to dad in the kitchen about, yeah, this girl, Michaela, like I kind of like her. And so he was asking questions about her and just trying to get to know her and asking questions about her family and, you know, where she went to church and things like that. So um, I don't know about rules, but definitely a part of the conversation, which was really important to me. So uh, that was good. Uh, what is one piece of advice that you wish you would have known about dating at a young age? <laughs> I would say for me, I mean, it's a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here, just recognizing that you should be looking at the big picture and the long term versus the short term. And um, yeah, like going to the movies with somebody and being in a relationship in middle school or high school even, like that's fun and that's great, but like what is that really accomplishing? Like versus uh, man seeking out what God has for me right now and being focused on that and, and what he's got down the road. Um, and so I would say just don't miss the big picture um, for, for the little things that might satisfy you for a little bit now. Yeah, I would say too like, Somebody said this a while back, like, if you're dating somebody, like, if I'm dating a guy and, you know, you have to think of, well, if you're not going to end up marrying that person, then what is that guy's wife going to think about this? So just, like, thinking about that kind of, like, more intentionally, kind of of, like, what yeah. you're doing and how you treat that person then. And I would just say accountability overall, too. Um, like, we didn't do everything perfect in our relationship, and there are some lines that we crossed when we were dating. We never went crazy into that, but, uh, yeah, and, and just other relationships, too. Just having somebody that's keeping you accountable and asking those hard questions um, to help keep you on that track towards God is so, so important. Um, another question uh, from Alicia said, did y'all have a lesson like this before you started dating? Um, yeah, so like I grew up in youth group and so I heard things like this. I think um, my temptation and the thing that I did was I just tried to make it fit the relationship I was in instead of actually hearing what God was saying about what I should be pursuing, what I should be doing. Um, like I would make excuses or try to make the relationship fit what God wanted versus looking at what God wanted and then seek a relationship for that. Um, anything you would add to that? Um. I'd say, like, for me, it wasn't, like, a huge focus, because, like, I, of course, went to the private school, but, like, going to church on Wednesday night and youth group, like, that, that wasn't really a big focus for me, so I didn't go very often, like, I'd occasionally go to the one that was at our church, um, at, that the school was connected to, and then go to a different one that the church I was going to at the time, so it wasn't really a big Focus. Yeah. Uh, we'll do one more. Mason asked, how long did it take for you to realize that you wanted to marry the other person? Um, yes, yeah, so that's a good question. I, I think pretty early on, like I, I do think I was to the point and understood what God wanted in dating uh, when we started dating and understood like, yeah, I'm looking at this person for, is, is she marriage material, right? Like, is this somebody that... I could see myself being with, uh, does it line up with what God's doing and where God's taking me? Um, and so I would say started thinking about that a couple months into dating, um, especially since we were starting to get ready for college and you're thinking about life plans and career choices and stuff like that. And so started thinking through that. Um, I would say when Michaela started watching baseball more uh, frequently, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I, think, I think maybe, uh, I mean, I proposed three years into our marriage uh, and started making plans for that, I would say, six or eight months before that even. So um, I would say, yeah, like two and a half years in, um, two, two and a half years in. Yeah, I would say probably about a year in, like when we were going into, going to college and kind of like working, like doing our own things instead of still being under our parents and... I mean, still under our parents, but like 
going off for ourselves and um, just realizing like, oh, okay, yeah, like this is what he wants and this is what I want and do they line up and yeah. things like that. Um, Man, and I'll say this too, it's it's so good like to just be walking in God's plan. Uh, like there are things about my life like like being at Northeast, right? Like uh, I, I feel like this is where God has called us to be and this is where we get to serve and I'm so thankful for that. And it just feels right when you know that you're walking in God's plan. And I feel that way about Michaela and I's relationship and I've never felt weird about that. I've never felt like did I choose the wrong person or, or anything like that because Michaela pushes me towards Christ and that's my ultimate goal is to run towards Jesus and so um, that just it just feels right you just know I remember before we got married people were asking if I was nervous and being like no like this is what it's supposed to be like uh, God's made this clear that this is what he wants for us and I'm pursuing what he wants and so it fits and it's good um, yeah so super confident in that so with all that, uh, man, we're going to wrap up. We just want to recap really quick these three weeks. So uh, write these things down or screenshot this if you're watching on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. So from week one, we said love God most, seek him first, and have accountability. Um, so when today is when you're doing these things, when you've got your priorities straight. Secondly, uh, why to date? Don't date to fill a selfish need. Date for marriage. That's God's intention is for you to be in a relationship to see if that's a fit for marriage. And then ultimately... Start a relationship with somebody who's going in the same direction as you, and that direction needs to be towards Christ. And so if you're moving towards a relationship with somebody who's not chasing Jesus, then it's not going to work out, right? Like people say, oh, we broke up because we just went different directions. Like figure out that you're going in the same direction before you start it, and it will help that. So with that, um, I'm reading on our little chat here with our team that Amanda and Kristen are crying at their houses and grabbing tissues because they're inspired by our relationship, I guess, I don't know. Uh, so for their sake and for yours, uh, we're going to call it a night. But man, we love talking about this stuff together and with you guys. And so if you have any other questions that we didn't get to, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, and we'd love to answer those with you. So um, I'm going to have Michaela pray here to close this out in a second. But man, don't forget, we've got some stuff coming up. We're not going to be meeting next week on Wednesday night, uh, but we'll be changing some stuff up and be looking on our social media and stuff tomorrow uh, for an announcement about the summer. It's exciting. So. And I'm getting demoted. And we're going to kick Michaela off the show officially. Mm. So. <laughs> All right, Michaela, can you pray for us? Dear Lord, thank you for staying for everything you've given us. And I just pray um, that you would just help us um, keep our focus on you so that we can um, find who you have called us to date and um, potentially marry. And I pray that we would have the right intentions with those dating relationships and um, that you would just um, help us um, keep each other accountable with that and um, we are thankful for the relationships that we have in our lives that we are able to look up to and um, thank you for this time that we've been able to do this during quarantine and we love you and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right guys, thanks again for joining us. Um, we look forward to being able to see you guys soon. So uh, yeah, have a great week. Bye.